Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the film Black Widow, specifically focusing on the film industry. This video is part one of two. The first part of this video is going to focus on ownership and production of Black Widow and the second part will focus on marketing and distribution. This video is going to be particularly relevant to you if you are studying AQA GCSE Media Studies. It is currently one of the set texts on that specification. However, this video might be relevant for you if you are studying any kind of film related course or topic. So the first thing you're going to need to know is a little bit of background information about the companies that were involved in the making of this film. Now, Black Widow is made by Marvel Studios. Marvel Studios is a uh, subsidiary of Disney. Disney being one of the biggest film companies, obviously, in the world. Disney bought Marvel in 2009 for $4 billion. It just goes to show the amount of money and power that Disney have as a company. Now, this is a great example of horizontal integration. Marvel Studios was making films that Disney could see were popular. Marvel Studios owned the rights to lots of Marvel characters that Disney wanted to make the films for. So Disney bought out Marvel Studios and decided to keep that company operating as one of its own subsidiaries and that way they eliminate one of their pieces of competition in the industry and they start increasing their possibility of making more revenue. Disney buying out Marvel Studios is not the only thing they've ever purchased. They've horizontally integrated and bought out a lot of other media companies over the years, including Lucasfilms, 20th Century Fox uh, and Pixar. So um, they regularly do this. They regularly see the competition, see what they want and then purchase those companies to bring them under the Disney umbrella brand. Now, Marvel Studios itself is quite a diversified company. They don't just make films. They originally started in the comic book industry, but they also have their own TV studios and they make their own animations as well. Um, and they also have branched out into music too, so they can create their own soundtracks. So quite a diversified company, which means that they can operate across a wide variety of media industries. Marvel Studios themselves have around 500 employees, which I guess is reasonably small. However, Walt Disney as a company is obviously much, much bigger. Their parent company is one of the big five film companies in the world. Disney have around 230,000 employees across the world. So clearly, as a company, as a whole, they're incredibly large and incredibly powerful. Now, Black Widow had a budget of around $200 million. Now, that $200 million is just for the actual production side of it. It does not include marketing and distribution. And in the film industry, we often operate on the assumption that a company will spend roughly the same amount on marketing and distribution as they did on production, which means they probably spent another 200 million on marketing and distribution. So about 400 million pounds in costs to make Black Widow makes it one of the most expensive films that Marvel have ever made. It's particularly high considering that there were no full CGI characters in Black Widow, whereas in other Marvel related films, they've had to create whole characters out of computer generated images. In Black Widow, there is some CGI, but it's not an entire character. There's no character who consistently is there through the uh, through the use of CGI. So um, that would lower costs slightly. And so the high budget is even higher if you take that into consideration. Black Widow was originally considered as a film many, many years before this one was even started in terms of production. Originally, a man called David Hayter, who is a writer, director um, and Lionsgate films, they actually bought the rights to Black Widow from Marvel and um, they were considering making it into a film back in 2004. Um, however, whilst they were in the stages of development, several other big female led films were released, some of which did not do very well at the cinema. And that includes films like Eon Flux. I think this put Lionsgate off of making Black Widow as they felt that um, the market had clearly shown that they weren't ready for a big female-led film. 
So they shelved the film, decided not to start making it, um, and eventually um, the rights reverted back to Marvel. In 2006, 2007, um, we were going through a period of female empowerment in the media. There was the Me Too campaign where people were starting to realise and understand the huge amount of discrimination that women were going through in the workplace, including in the film industry in particular. Companies started looking around for films that might prove that they were um, not sexist and that they did consider that women could lead a film, direct a film uh, and that women could be empowered. Black Widow was obviously a great choice for Marvel at this time. Several male directors had actually expressed an interest in directing the film. Scarlett Johansson had actually already been cast in the role of Black Widow in several other Marvel movies and so she was obviously the clear choice to play Black Widow in the standalone film. This would have brought in a very key pre-sold audience of her fans and it would have linked the film clearly to the rest of the shared Marvel universe. Therefore, Scarlett Johansson was a really key player in this film. If she decided that she wanted something in the film, then Disney and Marvel had to listen. Scarlett Johansson openly said that because of the Me Too movement and because of the issues surrounding women in the film industry at the time, that they should have a female director. So although there were lots of male directors interested, Scarlett Johansson, with the help of Marvel and Disney, chose Kate Shortland to direct Black Widow. Kate Shortland had a secure history of directing great stuff um, and she really did a lot of research into trying to make sure that this movie um, had lots of scenes in it that would empower women. So she actually researched female-led films, things like Alien, uh, Terminator and Thelma and Louise, where she could research fight scenes uh, that featured female protagonists. And she said that that really helped to inspire her when coming up with the plans for Black Widow. The production of the film took six months, quite a long time, and that's just the production side of things. Obviously, having Marvel Studios with Disney as the parent company of this big conglomerate means that you have this ability to have a high budget and therefore do a lot of things that smaller companies couldn't afford to do. For example, they filmed in multiple locations around the world, including Norway, Budapest, Morocco, Pinewood Studios and several uh, places within America. So um, uh, lots of locations within Atlanta, Georgia. Obviously flying your whole crew and all of the kit that you need around the world to multiple countries is highly expensive. There were lots of high expense costs within the film itself. Obviously lots of stunt sequences, car chases involving multiple cars. They had to use a lot of um, green or blue screen with wind tunnels to create the effect of the characters and the action sequences. Actors had to be suspended on wires with mechanical arms to give the illusion of the fighting, the jumping and the flying. The budget allowed them to employ 188 stunt people as well, so um, able to do a variety of stunts, whether it be water-based, fighting, aerial work, etc. The director of cinematography on the film used three Sony Venice cameras, so constantly using a multi-camera setup instead of filming on just one camera at a time. And in several interviews, he said that this was because he wanted to be able to catch action from all different angles to avoid having to reshoot those stunt sequences again and again and again. He felt that this made it feel more um, action based and gave it a lot more energy. He was a particular fan of those Sony Venice cameras because they are quite compact in relation to a lot of other film cameras. It meant that they could get that filmic look, but be in a camera that was able to move around in a reasonably easy way. In fact, they weren't the only cameras they used. They also used Panavision Millennium DXL2 cameras, Phantom Flex 4K, Panavision Pre, uh, Primo 70 series lenses and red helium cameras as well. So a variety of cameras. In fact, the director of cinematography is quoted as saying that he was able to have literally a bus full of cameras and lights so that at any point he could choose what cameras, what lenses and what lights he wanted on a shot by shot basis. 
This is obviously reflective of the huge budget and resources that Disney have to hand. Some of the stunt sequences involved even more technology. For, so for example, when they did the shots of the car chase, they wanted to get these kind of 360 degree shots of the car chase. And in order to do that, a company called CineSight had to get involved and they had to set up nine cameras surrounding the action so that the action could be filmed from 360 degrees by all nine cameras simultaneously. The camera crew alone had 300 people working for them. So 300 camera staff working on the film is huge. There was a lot of visual effects involved in the film as well during the post-production stages. So um, companies like Digital Domain had to get involved. There were 320 visual effects based shots that Digital Domain helped to produce. A company called Trickster was brought in to help with the digital effects on Taskmaster's mask, try saying that quickly, um, and with the blue veil as well. So um, a lot of visual effects um, staff, employees and companies having to be brought in. But that's because Disney have the money to do that, to be able to outsource to other companies. In fact, if you look at the number of people credited in visual effects alone, there are over a thousand staff credited on the film working on visual effects. Huge. CGI is a really great way of attracting a lot of mainstream audiences who really seem to enjoy the big budget special effects that a lot of these films offer now. However, the CGI has to be good quality and a lot of audiences are quite picky. Uh, there were several complaints from audiences that there were some scenes within Black Widow where they did not think the CGI was up to scratch. So even with Disney's massive budget and resources and facilities and number of staff, they're not always going to be able to please every audience. When doing post-production on the film and doing the sound for the film, Disney were able to um, purchase the rights to several big name songs that people would recognise bringing in those audiences. So being able to have the money to purchase mainstream songs. In addition, Disney and Marvel obviously have the money to create a lot of their own original music. They actually got an orchestra in. Um, so this was an, a 118 person orchestra and a 60 person choir specifically to record all of the music uh, and soundtrack for the film. Once production was finished, what normally happens is a company like Marvel or Disney will put that film out to test audiences. So they will have certain test screenings where they will show some audiences a kind of preview of the film, like this is what we think it's going to be. And then audiences will give them feedback. It's like a focus group. And that will then enable them to work out whether the film is going to be successful or not. And actually, when Disney did this, when they allowed test audiences to see it, audiences had quite a lot of feedback. They felt that some of the shots of Scarlett Johansson in her underwear were misogynistic and sexist and they didn't like it. So they actually cut those scenes out of the film to try and please audiences. In addition, some audiences particularly liked the chemistry uh, between Mason and Romanoff, the two characters. So audiences said they wanted to see more of those two characters together on screen. Now, unfortunately, they hadn't shot more of those two characters together on screen. So what did Disney do? They employ the entire cast and crew again to go and reshoot some more scenes of those two characters together just to please audiences. So another demonstration of the huge amount of money that Disney has to be able to do this. Now, I've already spoken about the draw of Scarlett Johansson for an audience. Obviously, she brings in her old pre-sold audience from the other Marvel films, but she obviously is an attractive lady. She'll bring in male audiences as well, and she may have fans from other films that she's done in the past. There are other stars that were cast for similar reasons. So, for example, Florence Pugh, who's a British actress, may well have brought in some more British audiences as well and fans of her previous work. In fact, director Kate Shortland actually said that Florence Pugh was specifically hired because of the great reviews she'd had in one of her previous films, Fighting With My Family. David Harbour is an actor who may be familiar to audiences from Stranger Things. So bringing or choosing particular actors who may be familiar to audiences who are going to draw in their fans and pre-sold audiences. 
In addition, there were a number of other familiar stars in that film, such as Rachel Weisz, Ray Winstone uh, and William Hurt as well. So people who are familiar to both British and American audiences and global audiences for some of the previous films that they've done. So that was the end of the first part of my Black Widow video. Please make sure you watch the second part for more information that focuses on the marketing and distribution of the film.